Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, um, Trusted CI's webinar for December 4th, 2023. I'm your host, Jeanette Dopp Heidi. Trusted CI is the NSF Cybersecurity Center of Excellence, and these webinars are part of its mission to deliver high quality, actionable guidance regarding cybersecurity to the NSF community. More information about Trusted CI can be found at trustedci.org. Today's topic is the open science chain with Suba Sivanyanam. Uh, Suba is the manager of the Cyber Infrastructure Services and Solutions Group at the San Diego Supercomputer Center at, at, at UCSD. Um, and before we begin, I have a few things to note. First, this presentation is being recorded. Second, participants are welcome to uh, ask questions during the presentation using the chat option, and we will probably have time at the end of the presentation for questions as well. And with that, I will hand things over to Suba. Suba, welcome. Thanks, Jeanette. Let me share my slides. Looks good. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you, Jeanette, for the introduction and uh, thank you for inviting me again to participate in a Trusted CI event to share my work. Um, today, I'll be talking about Open Science Chain, which is an NSF funded project that helps address issues related to protecting the integrity and provenance of scientific research data and artifacts. So this project was originally funded in 2018 and more recently funded again in 2021. I will mention the work done under both awards. Um, in today's uh, agenda, I'm sorry, I'm having difficulty moving the slides. Sorry about that. Um, so in today's agenda, I will start with the motivation for starting this project, provide an overview of, of the open science chain, its architecture, how one can use open science chain, uh, um, the current use cases, and I will mention our current status and conclude with the planned future work. So the project's motivation um, was uh, based on something that you may already be familiar with, that is that there is a known credibility and reproducibility issue with published research works in different domain sciences, and this is due to various reasons. And one reason is due to selective sharing of um, data. Now there are many public repositories with um, and with multiple funding agencies trying to address this issue with mandates and policies. Studies show that there has been an increase in data sharing. However, there's still research showing that even with these mandates that some of the data shared cannot be um, reused because the data may not be the same that was used in the study. Now that kind of makes it important that for um, the data to be reused attributes to ensure data trustworthiness, such as the integrity must be maintained. And one important facet of maintaining that integrity is to ensure that the data or its metadata has not been altered. So we need um, mechanisms to verify that the data we are using um, remains unchanged from its original state. Now, um, these are some additional questions that served as an inspiration for starting our project. Um, can we ensure integrity of data among um, different research groups sharing and working on the same data set? So at our center, we frequently see researchers, you know, working with um, collaborators across the globe uh, on projects, and each group will contribute or work from the same, um, from a shared data set. Now, but how can we be certain that the data remains consistent throughout the collaboration? And sometimes we see this issue even within a research lab where you know, multiple students will be working with the same data set, or it could be just one PhD student maintaining the whole thing and uh, passing it on to another person um, when he graduates or leaves um, the university. Now, um, this also raises the next question, which is, can we enable quick verification of the exact data set used for a particular published research or shared um, data? Um, it, this kind of becomes crucial to establish like protocols that allow quick and efficient verification, which kind of, you know, it ensures the credibility of our finding. So in, we see more and more user-defined workflows, especially, you know, on the computational side, 
um, how can we ensure the integrity uh, of the various research artifacts used in such workflows um, in various stages of that particular workflow? And this may not just involve the data, but it could also be the software use, uh, the methods or the algorithms employed at um, each stage. Now, one um, key aspect that often gets overlooked is the um, provenance of the data and the metadata that describes the data. Now, is the information about the transformation of the data or its history sufficient to replicate and reproduce the results? Um, establishing a clear and comprehensive provenance is essential for um, building trust in a collaborative um, research. Now, these are two terminologies that you may be familiar with. Um, the cryptographic hash function is a one-way function that maps the data of an arbitrary size to a bit of a fixed size. Now, the main use of the cryptographic hash function is to verify the authenticity of a piece of data. Now, small change to the data as shown in this table can, will change the hash value of the data. As you know, um, blockchains are distributed ledgers that record data in blocks um, that are then chained together. Now, data in blockchain ledger is verifiable, which is essential for reproducibility and um, audits. Now, for ensuring integrity of research data, one could hash the data as soon as it's recorded that it will help identify manipulation of the data. Now, we can also store this cryptographic hash of the data set into blockchain that helps provide an auditable and immutable proof of existence of the research data at any given point of time. Now, this is exactly what um, Open Science Chain does. Now, um, Open Science Chain uses blockchain technologies to facilitate the validation of the data by storing the cryptographic hash of the data and the ownership information on the blockchain, uh, which kind of ensures the mutability of the data records. Now, OSC helps with the provenance metadata tracking by enabling researchers to document the metadata involved in the research and track the changes to it as you know, either the uh, research evolves or if even if the data set evolves. Now, Open Science Chain provides a cyber infrastructure platform for sharing this information, both the data and its metadata information, um, and gives the uh, and keeps track of you know who the owner is. And OSC also enables other researchers to come independently verify the um, integrity of the whole research process. So the at the core of the Open Science Chain is the blockchain, and we have built that using the Hyperledger Fabric, which is an open source um, blockchain framework that was uh, started by the Linux Foundation. Now, this is a consortium blockchain, meaning that all entities that participate are known entities, and there is no crypto economics or mining involved. Now, um, the metadata, the hash of the data, is stored in the blockchain as a transaction. And the actual data is, is, is stored off chain. We only store the reference to where the data is in the, as part of the blockchain transaction. Now the metadata for um, uh, that's supported by the open science chain involves a generic metadata, such as like the title, the description, um, where your data is stored, uh, maybe the DOI, if it's a published data set, um, and also the keywords. Um, now, each transaction is uh, signed by the individual contributor rather than the organization. So in our setup of the blockchain, we used um, three peers, and each peer had the ledger, the chain code, and also the state database. And then we used the ordering service um, uh, with the RAF configuration to order the release transaction and, uh, and submit it to the ledger. Now, um, so to access the blockchain, we have built the open science chain portal and client tools that can be used to um, either provide or verify information that gets stored in the blockchain. The portal is integrated with CI logon, which allows the federated login. And um, we have built interfaces where you know, researchers can just um, drag and drop files um, or folders, and it, we automatically calculate the checksum of that information and provide them um, uh, with an option to enter all the metadata um, information related to that particular work, 
record data set. Um, and then this whole information gets stored in the blockchain. The portal allow, also allows uh, researchers to search um, for data set maybe from their own discipline um, or of interest. And then they could um, also do the independent verification of the data sets using the portal, which I will um, show in the later slide. Now, um, as the data set evolves or changes, the um, the open science chain portal um, using that you can also view the uh, provenance history um, uh, as it as the change occurs. Now the uh, researchers can refer to a specific instance of this evolving data set um, and if they have use if they are using the same data set in their research. The um, portal also allows um, researchers to create a detailed workflow linking multiple sources of data. It could be their own or it could be a, you know, previously submitted by someone else on the Open Science Chain portal. Um, and also the computational analysis of code by linking to external repositories like GitHub or GitLab. Um, and they can create this whole um, workflow showing the various data they have used and also the, where the code resides. Uh, for doing the analysis of uh, the data. Um, so um, as I mentioned, you know, researchers can, um, other researchers can independently verify uh, the data set that was submitted to the open science chain. Um, and if in case they find an issue, and then this could be that they cannot locate the data or there is an issue with the checksum or they may not, there may be insufficient metadata they can indicate it on the portal and um, we contribute, um, we um, contact the contributor and um, then allow, and give them an opportunity to come and rectify the issue. If there are multiple um, uh, complaints, then we kind of flag it on the portal and indicate that there may be an issue with, the, uh, with this particular data set. So this is um, um, it, it. The portal was a way for you know users to interact with the blockchain. It kind of lowered the barrier of using the blockchain. But then, uh, if there are large data, if where people are working with a computational pipeline or workflows, um, you know that may not be the more practical way of using the blockchain. So we have also built, developed these uh, Python-based command line utility, which can be run on um, where the data exists, which could be in, on a cluster or maybe even. For from their own laptop and the similar functionalities such as submitting transactions, updating a transaction, uh, as well as query can be performed using the um, command line utility. So here are some um, use cases of how the OAC was used. Um, some of the researchers um, used uh, open science chain while publishing the work, storing information about their data set. Um, but you know, as you know, publications happen every few years. But this gave us an opportunity to interact with the researchers and get their feedback. Um, and it was uh, sort of uh, clear that uh, they needed more access control. Right? They don't want um, maybe the data is embargoed, or they don't want the information to be shared publicly till you know they publish their research work. Um, and they also some of the groups wanted only certain members of the group to be able to contribute, and not. Uh, the current OAC um, that at the time would only allow for an individual contributor and not, you know, allowing a group to uh, manage the data that was stored in the blockchain. So, but one of the other major need was able to customize the metadata entries based on their discipline or project. So even though Open Science Chain does not store the data set, the metadata the, the file path or file name can still have information um, that is not or should not be publicly available as in um, private data set. So, and also major research hubs have multiple projects and we didn't have a way to support that. So this led to our second award for building the Open Science Chain um, Integrity Services, which is an API-based integrity and verification service that um, aims to segregate and encrypt the metadata and the provenance information of private data set um, and allow only authorized entities to access the information. And we also wanted to provide controls for restricting access to the information stored in the blockchain. And most importantly, we wanted to provide support for various metadata formats 
um, adopted by disciplines and, um, and projects. So here's the um, overview of the open science chain, um, integrated services blockchain. We um, deploy the um, Hyperledger fabric with the private data collections feature. Now the private data collections allows separation of the public and the private data. So there is a um, data that's marked as private or if there are metadata entries that are marked as private, only the hash of it gets shared publicly None of the information gets shared. They are kind of stored in a transient database uh, with only the organization that is authorized to view that can view that information. Now, um, each peer in the Open Science Chain IS is hosted with a ledger, a chain code, a PDC, and a state database. See, it allows um, the research organizations to re register users and also create groups. Um, the user identities recorded in the um, are recorded in the PDC for each organization. Um, and pretty much this chain code manages um, the group membership, verifying user existence, existence for actions. It also enforces permissions based on group membership and user actions. The chain code functions were developed using um, Golang and um, the rules for transaction submissions are also defined um, in the chain code. Validation checks are performed for transaction validity. And also, um, uh, lastly, the chain code also allows submissions of templates for each project with custom fields. So we um, designed the data template or the schemas using JSON schema conforming to a meta schema. Um, this ensures structured and um, the mandatory fields for OSCIS submissions. We do have some mandatory fields like the keywords, but then we, are, we give them the ability to um, include the metadata according to their discipline or the project. They can completely customize it. Um, they can separate out what are the public metadata and what is the private metadata in the schema. And the schemas are also stored with bursting and key history functionality for um, retrieval. So the whole access control is managed in the group membership where it grads per submission um, and viewing permission based on the schema. Um, public fields um, are accessible without restrictions to authorized entity. Um, the private data is, is only the transient database and can only be viewed uh, by the organization that is storing that private data. So we developed um, simple REST programmatic access um, that translates the HTTP request to chain code um, um, invocation. The, um, this kind of reduces the complexity um, of the chain code interaction to better token authentication um, and JSON HTTP form variables. Um, we have um, deployed the API and I will show in the use cases following uh, the slide of how we're using the API. Um, we also uh, have developed an actual process of developing test suites with unit tests um, and um, are working on our wiki and documentation for using the the API. The first use case is with the citizen science initiative called the sitsci.org. Um, sitsci.org is also an NSF funded project. It's a data management platform for um, citizen scientists that, uh, that um, supports hundreds of projects ranging from um, monitoring water quality to wildlife to you know, biodiversity. Um, the metadata of the collected data set varies based on the discipline um, and the type of um, data being collected. Um, the project governance options includes, you know, the whole project being fully open to the public, closed to the public, but only members are admitted by like a gatekeeper for that project um, or entirely private to identified members. Um, um, and this sitsci.org also works with other citizen science initiatives, often exchanging data, and there was an interest in um, uh, managing the integrity of, the data, of their data sets. Um, so we started working with the Utah Water Watch project as the prototype. Now, this particular project is managed by three administrators, um, over 200 citizen scientists um, deposit data. They have over 7,000 data entries in which um, each data entry has about 30 data fields and uh, there are various templates, right, for each of these data entries. 
And so the way we did is we worked with the SIDSI PI and also the Utah Water Watch PI um, in defining um, what are the metadata fields uh, based on the schema and what needs to be a mandatory field. And uh, we help create the groups and the users and kind of set the controls on who can um, the, submit the data to the blockchain. Uh, we created and the schemas and then uh, we have different versions of the schema um, and we submitted, created and submitted um, the artifacts uh, based on the different schemas that all got stored in the blockchain. Um, so the other use case is we are working with um, neuro integrity connectivity software with PI uh, Sahu from Case Western Reserve University. Now this software, it computes uh, the topology structure from uh, intracranial data from epilepsy patients. Now this software is um, deployed on the neuroscience gateway and the PI was interested in storing the standardized metadata information um, associated with the data generated by this particular software uh, while running on the neuroscience gateway framework. Uh, and they wanted to store this into the open science chain um, to study um, the reuse and the reproducibility of this application. Now, as you can see, this particular software is almost like a workflow software, which has um, different modules and each modules of this workflow tool involves recording of unique provenance metadata elements to um, accurately record the context of each experimental study. Now, the PI is also involved with um, the development of a provenance metadata framework called the ProvCare, uh, which is based on the W3 C prof specification that the open science chain is also looking at. And, um, and the, the NIC tool has the provenance metadata features that they were interested in storing into the open science chain. And um, they are also interested in seeing how you could use these um, um, this metadata. Um, and since the PI is also working on um, ontology engineering principles across multiple stages of um, machine learning workflow, they wanted to see how open science chain can help with that. So while working on this, um, we, you know, we are we're also exploring how the neuroscience gateway framework itself can use open science chain uh, while running various uh, um, neuroscience related applications on various supercomputers. Um, and one, one interest that came up is, okay, how can we infer information about uh, computational neuroscience model um, using the data that gets stored on the um, open science chain. There is a paper that um, was recently accepted um, based on the work that we have done, um, and I will share the information once it's published. So our um, the current status is, you know, we are still continuing to work with various projects, including research hubs. Um, we still have to um, develop and refine our search capability for open science chain IS. Uh, we are working on creating and deploying um, CICD process to automate testing and deployment of new code development, especially as we add more functions to the chain code. Um, and we want to explore the integration of the, uh, the open science chain portal framework that, that we um, developed with the first grant into this OSC IS so that you know, we kind of merge the information from um, the blockchain uh, to blockchains. Um, and we have been doing community outreach through participation in conferences, workshops, and talks such as this one. Um, and we can we will continue to do that. Uh, we participate in the high school student mentoring program every summer, um, and we hope to continue doing that too. So um, with that, I uh, will take any questions that you may have. Um, that's my contact information over there in the URL of the Open Science Chain project. Great, thank you. Um, I'm going to grab the screen. And if people have questions, they can type them in while we're doing this. So again, um, Participants are welcome to type questions into the chat, and I'll be monitoring that um, as we go along. Um, as far as community updates, our next webinar is next year. <laughs> so um, 
Uh, that will be January 22nd at 11 a.m. Eastern. Um, our topic is TBD because I am in the process of scheduling the 2024 season. So if any of you in the audience have received an email from me um, and you are interested in presenting, please contact me uh, or contact us at webinars at trustedci.org. And with that, um, if you have any, uh, or if you would like to view archive presentations, uh, join our announcements mailing list or submit requests to present, you can find more information at trustedci.org slash webinars. And with that, I think we will wrap things up. So Suba, thank you so much for presenting. Um, last call in the audience for questions. Um, we've got a comment here from Kevin at the NSF. There is another project getting underway at SDSC called National Data Platform. Um, is there potential for NDP to integrate OSC into NDP? NDP? Um, hi, Kevin. I am um, not fully aware of what is being proposed in the National Data Platform. I just know a very high level view of that. So, but if there is potential, I'm happy to you know collaborate with them. And uh, he says thanks. All right. Well, um, thank you everyone who are who attended this uh, presentation. And with that, I will wrap things up. Um, Suba, thank you again so much for presenting and. Um, have a great new year. Yep. Thank you, Janet. Bye-bye, everyone.